Welcome to Half Past Broke, where the dreams are big and the walls are smaller. I'm Walker. I am Eric, and uh, you know what I'm about to ask, Walker. What you drinking? Tonight I got the Shiner's S'mores Ale. It is basically just chocolate and marshmallow ale. It is so sweet and so perfect. That's awesome. I've actually only had uh, their Bach, and I guess that actually goes perfectly with what I'm drinking, because I got a little surprise for you guys today. Um, Compliment this ran, long winter. Yeah, I, well, I, I ran out of beer, so that's bad. Yeah. But luckily, I have a nicely stocked uh, liquor cabinet, and I shed a tear for you. I decided that I was gonna make a milkshake, but a boozy milkshake. And if you're watching, I'll show you right now. It's amazing because right now, it in a uh, Starbucks like frappuccino bottle, so it just looks like a star a Starbucks frappuccino, which is great. Because you can drink it in public, <laughs> and because uh, it looks exactly like it. That, so basically, none it would is, be the wiser. <laughs> no, I would know. It's so fucking good though. Um, it's basically just chocolate ice cream, milk, three ice cubes, um, chocolate syrup, and then a bunch of Stoli vodka. It's um, it's the Stoli chocolate and coconut vodka. It's fuck anything. It's like, it, no. it's, it, it goes great in like milkshakes, anything thick like coffee. Now, um, before you go into too much detail, does that thin that out at all? Like, I know alcohol is like a super thin liquid. Yeah, the vodka, the vodka definitely thins it out. So that that's why you put a lot of ice cream in there. <laughs> or you can, you you can. I didn't do it this time. You can counterbalance it and instead of using milk. You can use a little bit of heavy cream in there. Um, but this is perfect hmm. for what it, this this is. It's not like a thick shake that you have to drink with a that you have to eat with a spoon or something. It's perfect. You just drink it right out of the bottle. Perfect. All right, so on to the topic of the day. So we have a couple of local favorites that we would like to discuss today. And Eric, would you like to um, break down what your local favorite is? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so I had options. Um, I'm in like a weird part of New Jersey where I could either go on with um, fat sandwiches or I'm close enough to Philly where go you know, Philly cheesesteak, which I hate calling it a Philly cheese, because you can make a fucking cheesesteak anywhere. Yeah. But I decided to go with cheesesteaks because I don't know. I just I love fuck I love cheesesteaks. They're so good. I go everywhere I go. Addicting. <laughs> yeah. You know, like because people make them in different ways all over the place, different styles, just whatever, whatever you want. So I decided to make my own. Okay. Um, and without like all the proper supplies, like I don't have a, a meat slicer, which is really how you get that thin like shaved steak. Yeah. Um, what I ended up doing is I got two just real nice, you know, round cut steaks, pretty cheap too. I think I paid like three bucks. Oh, that's um, awesome. For like for like two little, it was probably like like, chuck, uh, like chuck steak maybe. Yeah, I don't even know. I, I threw the box out but it, it was nothing special it wasn't like high-end steak it was just whatever was on sale mm -hmm. and you know i was able to cut it relatively thin i'd say I, could, I was able to get it you know into what quarter inch quarter inch slices by like what uh, two inches long that's fair yeah <laughs> um and a lot of people say that it's not a real Philly cheese steak if you don't have cheese whiz. Well, I don't really believe that because I'm a fan of like. And cheese whiz is garbage, by the way. Yeah, you, you, you get shot in Philly if you said that. They'd be like, "What? what? Look, they got to live in Philly." But like, well, it, it wouldn't even be by like a local gang. It would be by like the fucking owner of Gino's cheese steaks. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's like one of the most famous cheese steak places, Gino's and Pat's. Um, okay. Good. I've had I've had them both. Uh, as a as a commonly more known like throughout the country type of meal, where would you say the best cheesesteak you've ever had was? Oh well, all right, the best cheesesteak I ever had. I'm gonna give a shout out to my boy Yaz because this man went to a fucking um, a butcher and got like, God, I forget it was an aged ribeye steak and they like try oh. to call them out of it because they're like this is a really expensive steak they're like are you just gonna cut this into cheese steaks she's like you goddamn right i am <laughs> like, 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 
they tried to like talk him out of it because like it's really expensive to cut up into like maybe you want to go with the sirloin. He's like, nope, <laughs> I want this. No, nah, you gotta go with a hundred dollar a pound steak. That's how you was, get like the f- most phenomenal. So what he did is he didn't even like shave it. He just, you know got it sliced relatively thin, probably like quarter inch thin, but like a whole slab of it. He didn't even need to cut this up. It was so smooth you bite into it and it just melts you, got, you know the oh. onion <laughs> on fresh italian bread from a bakery not from some bullshit shop right okay <laughs> fuck shop right their bread's like a fucking you can knock somebody out it's like a fucking baseball bat Fun, that, and that's like funny cheese. story <laughs> yeah oh God. so that was like that was the best cheesesteak i ever had um my friend made it in his kitchen but i'd say commercially you know, Gino's and Pat's are the most famous in Philly, but I did read, I haven't been to this place, but I did read uh, that the late Anthony Bourdain, one of his favorite places was in New Jersey, in Camden. So it was, oh. it was funny because he said, you know, the best, the best cheesesteak's probably not from Philly. It's right in New Jersey. Um, you gotta give credit. It's like give, it's like saying that Buffalo has the best um, wings, and I've they, I've been I've been to a hundred places that have had better wings than some of the places in Buffalo I've been. It's just the name, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this place is called Donkey's Place. Um, Donkey's. It's in Camden. I'll make a trip out there one day because you know someone says, you know, Anthony Bourdain says they got the best cheese sticks. Yeah, you gotta go. <laughs> So I'll get out there eventually. Um, but as far as like even the price goes, basically I found that um, ten dollars is your average cheesesteak price. Oh uh, yeah, that's that, I, that, that's fair. I mean it's a mo- it's a mostly filling meal, and like it generally yeah. comes with a couple extra sides. Um, now that that's to buy it at a, at a at a place. But what I love about making the cheesesteak is guess what? For ten bucks, I can make about three cheesesteaks. You know? Yeah. And you can put what you want on it. You mm. know, it's just, I'm a big fan of like just customizing your meals. You know, you go some places and you go, you get it their style, which is great to get influence for your own cooking. Yeah. You but get, you get a little, you get a little creative. I mean, it really like yeah. it tailors to your taste. Mm-hmm. Cause it, like, say you don't like, uh, obviously Philly cheesesteak has kind of a limited thing of what people don't like, but like, Say you don't like the pickle on t- the pickles on burgers, like you take the pickles yeah. off. Like you don't go to a restaurant and be like, "Oh, I don't want any pickles, please." Like it just yeah. it makes it it, <laughs> it makes more sense to just like make it at home. You make it to what you want. I just I don't, I just I've recently just started loving cooking so much because mm-hmm. you know what? Guess what? If I want to make a fucking cheesesteak and put fucking habanero peppers on it guess what i'm gonna do it and nobody can nobody can kick your ass because of it <laughs> Whatever you want. You make it how you like but that's that's really the gist of my my cheesesteak adventure um yeah. yield triple the triple the amount of cheesesteaks for about the same price as one yeah but you're also you gotta go get cheesesteaks placed you know so you gotta get your influence you gotta figure out you know find out how and everything you oh, all the recipes in the world, but until you go and eat, you know, a hundred different cheesesteaks from a hundred different places and compare and contrast what you like, you're never gonna be able to make your own amazing cheesesteak. Well, yeah, it's like reading about how to drive a car and then like getting behind the wheel. Like you're never gonna know. <laughs> but that, yeah, that's. I mean, so that's the local dish I went with in like the Southern Jersey region. Um, what about you? To, well, I'm from a wonderful little city called Rochester, New York. I saw a catfish episode when they, <laughs> someone was getting catfish in Rochester, and they they they, uh, they all met up in a park. There, and I thought of you. <laughs> that's, well, that's to the, be fair, yeah, that's, a, that's my only experience with Rochester. As far as far as like media is concerned, that's Rochester's claim to fame. Good. Oh, it's a good one, too. I love catfish. Because uh, ever since uh, Kodak, I'm sure everyone's familiar with Kodak. Kodak is based in Rochester, and Kodak fell hard. And it screwed the economy in Rochester. But that's a discussion for another time. Yeah, anyway. I don't, I don't, you don't even see them anymore. I didn't even think about that until you said that. Yeah, Kodak yeah. used to be, like, <laughs> big boys and, like, cameras and stuff. And then when everything went digital, they yeah. shit that- 
Fun fact, the guy that made the guy that designed the digital camera was actually an employee of Kodak and they just kind of threw out his idea, so he quit and took it to someone else. That's awesome. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, anyway, on the topic of Rochester, Rochester is famous for two things. Craft beers, because let's be honest here, it is like 20 minutes from the Finger Lakes, and the Finger Lakes is like one of the biggest craft beer places I have ever seen. And they have, and they have the Genesee Brew House, which is a huge oh company. Like they're known, oh they're known for <laughs> they're known for their shit beer. But if we, if you go to Rochester, there are some amazing beers that Genesee Brew House makes. They have re-imaged since 2012, and it has been nothing but amazing beers since. And they're 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 even redoing the cream ale. I'm sure you've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it actually it was funny because I guess you got the packages way sooner because you live up there. Yeah. And like a, a couple months later, I went to my liquor store and I was like, "Oh shit, we got the new packages, got <laughs> the, the new logo and everything down here." Yeah, no, it's it's awesome. Like, as like Genesee is really bringing in like the revenue that Kodak lost with like all their like advertisements or partnering with other smaller brew houses and stuff like that. And uh, that's it. I I just like I think that's awesome. So on to the the dish part of it, our episode because obviously this is what we're kind of going towards. It's true. Garbage plates. Oof. Oof. Sounds like sounds like something you shouldn't be eating. It sounds like something. A, it sounds like a, something a raccoon would eat. Wow. Yeah, you just you throw out a yeah. little garbage plate top. And you're just, yeah. <laughs> just fucking, raccoon's got good taste. So, if a raccoon had this, man, you would not see raccoons on the road anymore. They'd be too fucking fat to leave the forest. <laughs> oh, I've, seen, I've seen some hefty raccoons. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 what is a garbage plate? So, a garbage plate, okay. So, in its ex literal form, is what's is a thing of home fries, like half a plate of home fries, which is just cubed french fries for those who don't know. Um, the other half is <laughs> apparently the dogs are barking. Okay, so I'm gonna try to talk over that. No, 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 no. just hold on. I've, I've been petting the dog this whole time because she's been like harassing me. But it, if I pet her, she doesn't want. Me. So I, I have to like pet my dog this entire time so she doesn't like harass me. Damn, I should have let them out. My bad. Anyway. So with a garbage plate, what we, what we got is um, home fries, and we got a mac salad. Mac salad is like whatever iteration you want. Generally, it's just, it's macaroni, and, um, mayonnaise, and like other vegetables like celery and whatnot, and onions. And uh, so with that on the two as the two sides, like just just literally two halves of a plate, like two big portions of each. So you got mac salad on one side home fries on the other they, they don't they don't go over each other not yet wow yeah my blown right <laughs> so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your two you're gonna take two burgers or just two main meats just pick, take a pick i mean i've seen people put like over easy eggs on top but let's go with like the purest iteration of it it's two cheeseburgers you take two cheeseburgers, you slap those babies right on top of the home fries and mac salad. Just like a nice little, like, fluh. And if you go on our Instagram, you'll see a nice decorated picture of the completed product. True. Just posted it before. But, just game changer, there is a sauce out there. A hot sauce that is made with ground beef. Now, you take the ground beef and you, you break it down. You like you break it down to like the grittiest form of the, the, the ground beef can go. You take like your spices, you take various different spices. My wife made a lot of this, so she can talk about it more when we get into later episodes. It's a little cheeser there. <laughs> but um wow. she'll break down that a little bit more. But it's a meat hot sauce. It's just like it's basically like hot sauce, but like meat thrown in there. It just, it's everything you could possibly want. Is, you, the, is the sauce made from, like, the meat, like, the, like, grease from the meat? When yes. You down you, cooks? It, it, the biggest thing is, like, and I've tried it with turkey meat, it doesn't work as well. It almost turns it into a chili with turkey meat. It's not as, like, saucy. There, it doesn't spread as well as, like, if you were to have, like, a really fatty piece of, like, ground beef. And... <laughs> 
Real nasty bitch. Let, let, yeah. Oh, my God. Let it, <laughs> let, it, let it be known that what I'm advertising is not diet approved. No, no nothing <laughs> nothing in this show is diet approved. Exactly. To... We drink beer and eat fat oh, food for a living, Mr. 2XL. <laughs> oh, well, you know what's really funny is I, I'm going to interrupt you real quick because Go for I, it. The, the only reason I wanted to get a blender is because, like, oh, I'm going to start making healthy smoothies and meal replacement shakes. Guess what? I made a fucking <laughs> <laughs> alcoholic beverage pod with pod ice cream. Vodka and ice cream milkshake. So. <laughs> <laughs> that that kind of went out the window. You're an enabler. Next thing you know, you're going to make margaritas and be singing Jimmy Buffett all night long. I do. Honestly, <laughs> I fucking love margaritas. I oh, love dude, so margaritas good. are so good. Especially, yeah. like, if you're just chilling out to a nice, like, oh, Jimmy so Buffett song, like Scarlet Begonia is just playing in the background. Oh, man. Nice, nice warm night outside. Oh, oh. I can't fuck. Chill out on the porch. Pretend that you're somewhere important. <laughs> yeah, maybe like a tiki bar or something. It's cheap enough to make margarita. So yeah. anyway, so on the, uh, after the meat hot sauce, uh, if y'all are following, after the meat hot sauce, you chop up some raw onions, like real dice, like real fine raw onions. You spread the raw onions on the top, preferably like the red onions or white onions. Those are the ones that generally go pretty good raw. And then you top it off with some spicy mustard. Just like a little like drizzle over with spicy mustard. Just give it a little bit of a spike in, di in differential tastes. Now, if you were to make this, I am a ketchup whore. I will load this thing with ketchup. It elevates the flavor so much more. If you didn't want to add so much ketchup, add a little bit of tomato paste to your meat hot sauce. It'll give it that ketchup taste. But you don't have to like overcloud it with like a vinegary condiment. Now, when you're eating this, do you like just go fucking all in and like mix it all together, or do you, you know eat a little hash brown, grab a little piece of burger, put it in order, or you just fucking like stick your goddamn face in it and hope for the best? Oh, brother, let me tell you, you go whole hog. <laughs> <laughs> So you're just going in there with yeah, like two I mean, it's like it's like a straight motorboat. You're just diving oh, your face and it's just like blurring that shit together. Like, <laughs> yeah, you, you take a knife, you cut it all up in like the finest pieces. Like, no matter how beautiful it looks when they serve it to you, you're gonna cut that shit up into like the finest pieces you can. You're gonna blur it up so it just looks like someone vomited on your plate. That's amazing. You're gonna I, you, you get a you get a fork full of that though. The most enlightening fattening taste you could possibly achieve in your I mean, mortal life i want one so bad so i think maybe what uh me and walker might do we didn't even talk about this i just have an idea maybe one of these days i'll make a garbage plate and he'll make a cheesesteak there we go <laughs> just, just a little something something because i'm like oh my god like we've been talking about garbage plates i like I'm gonna die if I don't have one. I'll probably die if I do have one from a heart attack, but I'm gonna die from heartbreak if I don't have one. <laughs> Either way, my heart's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Say goodbye to 40. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I've done a lot of cool stuff in my life, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, fuck it, 40's great. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. 40's sounding like old age to me. <laughs> it is. Oh my god. Well, so that, um, that's what I got with the garbage plate. They're, they're everywhere in Rochester from, like, price-wise. Like, I've seen them for, like, six ninety nine, and I've also seen them for, like, 16 bucks. Like, people will take whatever meats they want and whatever quality ingredients they want and try to call it a garbage plate. It's basically the same thing. It's just different ingredients. Honestly, once you get, like, that greasing like hot sauce over top of it it doesn't fucking matter if you spent fifteen dollars or six dollars it tastes all the fucking same so go out get yourself a six dollar garbage plate and honestly ground beef is like one of the cheapest types of meat you could buy i think i bought two pounds for like six bucks i was gonna say how much did it cost you to make those two garbage plates okay so two pounds caught like two pounds of ground beef for six bucks i made the hot dog or i made the ha the hamburgers and I made the meat hot sauce out of, out of that. And I still had meat left over. Noodles, okay. Um, there, was a, there was a sale, actually, like going going with our budget agreement thing. 59 cents for a pound of noodles. And I got, like, the elbows or whatever. 59 cents for a pound of, of elbow macaroni. It was 
pretty fucking good. And, uh, whatchamacallit, the, um, the mayonnaise, like, it, mayonnaise costs about $1.99, something like that. And if you were to get, like, the home fries, I would suggest, honestly, buying whole potatoes, just dicing them up, and then going with the whole process of blanching and frying them yourselves. So, in total, it cost me about 12 15 bucks, depending on the sales that you find. And you can honestly find, like, some of the most amazing ingredients with that. All right, so six, so what, 16 bucks? That's, uh, God, didn't you say that there's, there's some place around you that is like a high-end garbage plate for 16 bucks? Yeah, it, it, like for 16 bucks, you're going to get like a couple little pieces of real fancy meat. But let's be honest here, with a garbage plate, it's going to get all stirred up. You're not going to notice the fancy meat as much. Yeah, well, for 16 bucks, I'd rather make myself five garbage plates anyway. Yeah. Um, so I was going to... Uh, Speaking of like the presentation and stuff, like you sent me the pictures, and that shit looks so nice. It, everything was like nice, evenly divided. That's why I asked before, like, what are you just fucking it, throw, throw everything around? It looks, it looked like well, really it, well put together. It's gotta pull in the, it's gotta pull in the uninitiated. It's gotta look good for the people that haven't seen like the yeah. true form of garbage yeah. plate before. So, <laughs> I guess real garbage plate enthusiasts don't really care too much about presentation because it's just going to get Oh yeah, cuz you immediately know what the fuck it's going to look like in like 5 seconds. So, you just literally take your fork and knife and just whirl wind it around in your plate. So, I'm really excited. You know what? That's that's what I'm going to do this week. I'm going to make myself a garbage plate this week. So, I'll send, I'll, I'll send you a little bit of ingredient. I'll send you the ingredients for the meat hot sauce. Everything else is pretty yeah. like straightforward but the meat hot sauce i'll give you i'll give you a good ingredient we will post it on our instagram too so if you want to make a meat hot sauce at home we'll have that for you yeah i'd actually like to start doing like recipes and shit because the like the definitely asian style steak i just made the other day oh yeah no when you sent me that picture that was so oh, good God, looking with the, with the fried rice and shit like this is this is stuff that people need to know this yeah shit, like, like seriously like elevating the sense of taste through the greasiest possible forum. Yeah, and just like getting the like, <laughs> ingredients that go together and I swear to I swear to God, there's no trans fat. <laughs> oh god. Oh yeah, you're gonna die. But <laughs> This is a treat. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. I'm gonna eat I'm gonna eat it like every day. I'm gonna be like <laughs> my my strange obsessions. Oh obsession. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> my strange addiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> addicted to garbage plates but like well you're gonna die in like three days yeah yeah you're not even fat yet your arteries are already clogged yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, i mean i was fat to start with but <laughs> my 600 um, pound life garbage plate edition right <clears throat> well not that bad yeah i was actually looking at gym memberships last night because sometimes it just gets to the point where you like don't you like, ah, shit. don't you bike ride to a lot of places like how like how does that like help you with your caloric intake it's it's good riding your bike places is really good but a little bit of the problem here is that if i need to get anywhere i have to go on like a relatively dangerous uh road oh, um, okay so if i need to ride anywhere like far like i i ride to the liquor store i ride to the uh um there's a nice little bar restaurant i'll ride to you know like the right aid and everything like that so if it's any anything that, like it's out there i always ride to mm-hmm anything past that i'm kind of like i don't really want to die in a car accident on my bike you know so it's but yeah riding bikes it's it, i don't know it, get, it gets you to places faster and it burns a little bit more calories than if you were to just sit in your car and hit the gas pedal so yeah, exactly. i mean like if you if you can't take a bike <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely. i got this like sick fucking setup on my bike at the rack a big like oh uh, yeah your peter like, parker style bike yeah <laughs> I went to the fucking liquor store, got a handle of vodka, put it in there. Went to the pizza place, got like two like a calzone box, just shoved it in there. I'm just I'm just riding home in style, you know. Oh hell yeah! All right, so on that note, we do need to wrap this up a little bit. So, um, aside from our food ex endeavors and everything, we are going to be posting stuff about gardening in the future and like oh I, I don't like that word oh uh, sorry we're gonna be toasting stuff about your veggies and we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna break down how to make your own garden and then we're gonna have canning and we're gonna have a special guest involved too 
and that special guest will break down to you how to amateur garden and get your vegetable on basically like you can grow you can grow your jalapenos you can grow your habaneras you can grow your tomatoes your potatoes like you you could get basically everything you could possibly want for a garbage plate for a philly cheesesteak out there in your garden i mean i just sort of the meat i don't think you really can grow cow but <laughs> so they called me in high school <laughs> beef tree <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really excited for that because I do plan on growing tomatoes and peppers and just shit like that. And, and, I and, and that's gardening. it. I, I, prefer, I prefer the phrase cultivating Brilliant. sustainable food sources <laughs> for your <Brilliant>. cooking endeavors. <laughs> so that, this, that episode will tie into this one. I don't know if it'll be the next episode, but there will be a tie in to growing your own veggies in the future. So stay tuned for that one. Like, subscribe, comment, and oh, come uh, on. What, are you, what is your first time on YouTube? Everybody, uh, go ahead and like, share, subscribe. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 subscribe to our stuff and let us know what you think. If you got anything more to input, let us know. Um, check out our Twitter. Check out our Instagram. Our Instagram has all our photos of the stuff that we do throughout the week. And um, a Twitter will let it, let you know when we have something posted, when it will be posted. It'll give you updates on everything. And in the works, there is a Patreon coming, and that will have some extra content that you can't get on YouTube. Yeah, so give us your money. And also, we're, we're working on a, a Discord server, so if you have like any input for the show, if you just want to hang out, bro out for a little bit, talk about shit, put some like sick recipes if you want us to try. Yeah, slant... Slam, slam us or send us an email and uh we'll uh we'll see what we'll see what you got we're also looking for other people to add on to this project so whatever you got to add to us let us know i think that's about it let's get the fuck out of here walker yes sir this has been half past broke i'm walker i am definitely eric definitely all right see y'all later see you guys